Hi, and welcome back. So there's no escaping the unrelenting passage of time, but super centenarians seem to have a peculiar ability to postpone the inevitable. A super centenarian is someone who's reached the ripe old age of 110, and they are much rarer than just centenarians. These are people who've reached the age of 100. Now, according to the Gerontology Research Group, there are, as of posting this video, 314 supercentenarians in the world, 291 ladies and just 23 men. There has recently been a thorough health evaluation of one of these supercentenarians, that person being Maria Branias. The study proposes that one of the reasons she lived to be 117 was that she possessed an exceptionally young genome. Some of her rare genetic variants are linked to longevity, immune function, and a healthy heart and a healthy brain. The researchers in Spain say they are now using these findings to provide a fresh look at human aging biology, suggesting biomarkers for healthy aging and potential strategies to increase life expectancy. These results are all based on her blood, saliva, urine, and stool samples. These are the samples that were volunteered by Maria Branias before her passing, sadly, in 2024, when she was, according to that time, the oldest living person in the world. Now, according to a team led by researchers at the Joseph Carreras Leukemia Research Center in Barcelona, Maria Branias had cells that felt or behaved as though they were much younger than her chronological age. She exceeded the average life expectancy of women in her home of Catalonia by more than 30 years. In her ripe old age, Maria Branias presented with overall good health. The researchers say that this was marked by excellent cardiovascular health and very low levels of inflammation. It has long been known that chronic inflammation is one of the most insidious threats to our longevity. While acute inflammation is your body's natural and helpful response to injury or infection, chronic inflammation is a completely different story. It silently damages tissues, disrupts cellular communication, and accelerates the aging process at the cellular level. Over time, this persistent low-grade inflammation increases your risk for nearly every major age-related disease. This includes heart disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, and also cancer. This persistent low-grade inflammation has been named inflammaging. Inflammaging refers to the chronic systemic inflammation that develops as you age, even in the absence of infection. It's now considered a key hallmark of biological aging. Longevity researchers believe inflammaging is driven by factors such as mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular senescence, gut microbiome imbalance, and a declining immune system. As inflammatory molecules build up in our bloodstream, our cells and organs endure constant stress, impairing regeneration and also resilience. You can't ignore inflammation if you're serious about extending your health span. Combating it means prioritizing anti-inflammatory nutrition, regular physical activity, quality sleep, and also stress management. Supplements like omega-3, curcumin, and polyphenols may also help to dampen this internal silent fire. Now, despite her advanced years, Maria Branias's immune system and her gut microbiome both had markers that matched very younger cohorts. She also displayed extremely low levels of triglycerides and very high levels of HDL cholesterol. Now, high triglycerides are a clear red flag. They're a type of fat found in your blood that when elevated signal poor metabolic health. Consistently high levels are associated with insulin resistance, chronic inflammation, and an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and also type two diabetes. These conditions directly undermine your longevity by accelerating vascular aging and damaging your organs over time. In contrast, high levels of HDL, that's high density lipoprotein, are protective. HDL is often called good cholesterol because it helps remove excess cholesterol from your arteries and transports it to your liver for disposal. It also has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, making it critical for cardiovascular health and resilience against age-related diseases. The ratio between triglycerides and HDL is one of the strongest predictors 
of longevity. A high triglyceride to HDL ratio often signals insulin resistance and increased cardiovascular risk. Why? While a low ratio indicates better metabolic flexibility and also better lipid health. If you want to live longer, and why wouldn't you? It's important to monitor your triglycerides and your HDL levels extremely closely indeed. Now, you can lower your triglycerides through exercise, weight management, and reducing your intake of sugar and alcohol. You can raise your HDL by eating healthy fats. These will come from especially things like olive oil, nuts, and omega-3s. All of these factors may help explain Maria Branias's excellent health and also her extreme longevity. She also lived a mentally challenging, social and physically active life. Living longer isn't just about avoiding certain diseases. It's about staying engaged, resilient and also vibrant. A lifestyle that keeps you mentally, socially and physically active forms a good foundation for healthy aging and extending your longevity. Mental stimulation, whether that be through learning, problem solving or creative activity, keeps your brain sharp and also delays the onset of cognitive decline. It strengthens neural connections, it supports memory and reduces the risk of dementia. Lifelong learners often maintain a more youthful brain structure and function well into old age. Now, social connections are equally as vital. Loneliness and social isolation increases the risk of mortality as much as smoking or obesity. Staying socially engaged boost your emotional well-being, lowers your stress hormones, and supports your immune function. Purposeful relationships can even reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and also depression. Now, physical activity is a non-negotiable when it comes to your healthy aging. It improves cardiovascular health, strengthens your muscles and bones, enhances mobility, and also regulates your metabolism. Exercise also supports good brain health by increasing blood flow and reducing inflammation. In summary, going from the least powerful predictor to the strongest, okay? So clean air, which is great, it doesn't predict how long you will live. Whether you have your hypertension treated is good, still not a strong predictor. Whether you're lean or overweight, you can stop feeling guilty about this because it's only in third place. How much exercise you get is next, still only a moderate predictor. Whether you've had a cardiac event and you're in rehab and exercising, getting higher now. Whether you've had a flu vaccine. Did anybody here know that having a flu vaccine protects you more than doing exercise? <laughs> whether you were drinking and quit, or whether you're a moderate drinker, whether you don't smoke, or if you did, whether you quit. And getting towards the top predictors are two features of your social life. First, your close relationships. These are the people that you can call on for a loan if you need money suddenly, who will call the doctor if you're not feeling well, or who will take you to the hospital, or who will sit with you if you're having an ex existential crisis, if you're in despair. That, those people, that little clutch of people, are a strong predictor, if you have them, of how long you'll live. And then, Something that surprised me, something that's called social integration. This means how much you interact with people as you move through your day. How many people do you talk to? And these mean both your weak and your strong bonds. So not just the people you're really close to who mean a lot to you, but like, do you talk to the guy who every day makes you your coffee? Um, do you talk to the postman? Do you talk to the woman who walks by your house every day with her dog? Do you play bridge or poker or have a book club? Those interactions are one of the strongest predictors of how long you live. So it's important to stay curious, to stay connected, as well as you've got to keep moving. Join a group that revolves around something that you are interested in. Learn something new and make daily physical activity a non-negotiable part of your life, even if, it is, even if it is just walking half an hour in the morning or after a meal. Now, I've covered many studies on this channel that clearly show the benefits of a high daily step count and a better outcome when it comes to all-cause mortality. And we're only talking here about somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000 steps a day, although more is better. The trio of mental stimulation and remaining socially active 
and physically active are a key part of the blueprint for a longer and more vibrant life. That said, Maria Branias also appears to have lucked out when it came to genetics too. According to the researchers, eating a Mediterranean diet, which is high in yogurt, certainly played a role in her long life. Extreme longevity is definitely influenced by a wide range of genetic and also environmental variables. Interestingly, the researchers noted a huge erosion in her telomeres. Now, these are the caps on the end of our chromosomes. Telomeres protect our genetic material and shorter ones are linked to a higher risk of death. Recent studies, however, propose that among the oldest of the old, telomere length is not actually a useful biomarker of healthy aging. In fact, having very short telomeres may have even provided her with a longevity related advantage. Hypothetically speaking, write the authors, the short lifespan of her body cells may have stopped cancer from even proliferating. They wrote, the picture that emerges from our study, although derived from only one exceptional individual, shows that extremely advanced age and poor health are not intrinsically linked. They also note that research on just one person, especially one as remarkable as Maria Branias, is limited in what it can reveal for the rest of us. The team of researchers freely acknowledge that larger cohorts are needed to extrapolate their current results. The larger studies comparing exceptionally long-lived people to their shorter-lived peers have also found biomarkers that set some humans apart. These include unique features that may help them resist disease. Centenarians are the fastest growing demographic in the world, but of them, only one in 10 people that make it to 100 actually live to see the next decade. This study into Maria Branias has provided researchers with a rare opportunity to study the possible pathways that make an extreme human lifespan possible. I think it was an interesting study. The only element I found really surprising was that shorter telomeres may have helped her to live longer. This certainly contradicts the current thinking that is spouted by many longevity experts in that shorter telomeres are always tied to a shorter lifespan. Let me know what you think is more important, mental stimulation, social interaction, or physical activity, or do you think they're all equally important?